Hello everybody. Today's topic is layers of identity bias. The growth of a brain till date we are going to analyze step by step from the very beginning that is from where the child who just took birth starts with the beginning the brain. The dark brown or dark red part you are seeing on the screen is representing our brain. So from the very childhood it gets developed like a container and whatever we learn is contained in the container. From the very beginning that is when a child just comes to the planet uh, when we understand when we analyze the very level of understanding the level of a consciousness of a child we can start initially it could be categorized as oneness for example a child is not aware of any this or that everything is one or to be more accurate there is no division at all in whatever is the perception of the child. The idea of this is me and that is something else is not developed yet. Then knowable and unknowable though in the child's brain this is never verbalized it everything whatever it looks at can be categorized into its own knowable its own unknowable which is only in terms of a motion for example a very small child looks everything in terms of motion and whatever is moving wherever there is a little movement it captures it grabs the attention of the child next it perceives everything whatever it's around maybe by eating or oh, by something it perceives and there is something which it cannot perceive so entire universe is divided into perceived and not perceived for the child and as he grows up grows up everything gets classified into two categories like sentient and insentient or in general words so what we call it's living and non-living now just whatever response to the external stimuli we call that living and if something which is uh, insentient that is which is cannot uh, it's which is not able to respond to its external stimuli we categorized as non-living thing for example a stone if we push it a pull it or hit it it cannot respond to it however if you pull the tail of a dog it barks at you and if you pull harder it may even bite you then humanity the youth is talking of a humanity is a talking of a humanhood humanness now from the youth the word humanity or the idea of a humanity becomes the biggest understanding for example for the benefit of a humankind everything else can be sacrificed is the idea which gains most importance in the ideas in the brain of the youth however at the background the idea the identity bias which runs deep is of the gender that means a male can never dream of also as not as a male and a female can find herself imagine herself only as a female even in the dream that means at the subconscious level of the brain as well and then though most often we don't verbalize the word or we don't uh, talk about the word of our racial feelings we still have them for example if a chinese a japanese 
let us say we are an Indian, a Chinese, a Japanese or a Negroid comes in front of us. Though we don't verbalize that we are racial in nature, immediately the feeling of a different comes in us. And we begin to compare whether the guy in front of us is more able, has some advantage over us or we are superior to that guy. This kind of a comparison begins and these uh, things, gender, race, caste, language, religion, these things uh, are in the order of uh, how strong their root is in our psyche. Now, after race, even more stronger whose roots are, are caste, language and religion. And uh, all these are categorized as one point because the roots of these aspects can be equally strong in our subconscious brain so we get entangled with identifying ourselves with a certain caste with certain language and with certain religion now the interesting fact is the growth of our brain doesn't stop here and a much more interesting fact is the further growth what we call growth through maturity unwinds itself whatever we have accumulated in the brain till now it unwinds itself as if a wheel had rotated in a particular direction and it unwinds itself now whatever we had accumulated till now through maybe various reasons by reading various books or moving around the world maybe due to or we have spent a lot of time in silent contemplation whatever may be the reason internal or external when we grow through all these and we are exposed to various of our ideas in ourselves then the growth continues the growth through maturity continues and the most much more interesting fact as it was mentioned here the growth till now what it had become it reverses and what we had learnt at the emotional plane that we get dissociated with them again and again and the layers of identity bias gets just reversed further growth of the brain is the reverse of what growth what order of growth we had seen just now the layers of identity bias get dissociated from our psyche mostly in the reverse order so gradually in the eyes of our understanding we begin to see that the caste language religion kind of aspects bear very so very small roles and are detrimental at times so gradually caste religion language these factors lose importance in our brain and we don't look at these things as very big aspects of our life however the same maturity goes through race and gender as well gender is generally very very strong at the root level and though many a times though we feel that we have risen above this the impressions are so strong that here we can take up the same example even when we are dreaming if i am a male i can never think myself as a female in a dream and similarly if a female dreams she can never think of herself as a male in the dream i am talking generally and generally it is next to impossible to think as the other gender even in a dream that means even in the subconscious level of our mind we are programmed to think ourselves as a male or female so our idea at the subconscious level too 
is gender oriented however when this feeling also loses strength in our psyche we proclaim to be much more identified with the idea for humanity now everything is uh, centered around the humanity whatever species are there on the planet we expect them to serve us for example imagine forests may run to wild fires we don't have any sensitivity towards it the entire environment of the world may break down and break down to pieces even and that doesn't create much sensitivity in us we are not able to recognize uh, what havoc we are creating only in the sake of uh, creating benefits for humanity the entire nature whatever we perceive is to serve the humanity this idea is the core of uh, the level of identity it's our identity bias because we ignore the other species which are present in the nature however the next is we think the next level of identity is in terms of uh, sentient and insentient we think that we grow scientific in nature our scientific temperament grows farther and farther and we observe everything in the universe very objectively and then we look everything we categorize everything into living and non living we think that the entire universe is made up of things which are living and which are non living you know about the corona virus it is something which is in between living and non living it is neither living nor non living it is in between it can multiply itself in that sense it is it seems to be sentient but it's insentient in terms of all other properties however let us let us come back to the today's topic that is the next level of identity bias is in between perceived and non perceived when we are talking of a perception we are concentrating our idea about the sense perceptions we human beings are having five senses that is eyes through eyes we see to nose we smell with skin we touch and eyes ears nose taste through tongue we taste and through the sense perceptions so whatever information we gather those all the information can fall into two broadest categories that can be perceived through senses and something which cannot be perceived through senses for example we can take uh, we can talk, take the example of a magnetic field where through the sense perceptions we are not able to perceive it however in the eyes of a knowledge we are able to see it because we see the movement of uh, let us say small iron pieces in a particular direction about uh, around a magnet so we understood that there is something which is not perceived and there is something which is perceived and everything together they form the universe around us the perceivable universe now however till now it was very 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 scientific and logical sounding but the next thing at a some level we gain some intuition from our own experience we find some glimpse of uh, something which is very difficult to express in our words and uh, that goes a uh, step different than the layer of identity bias of which limited us in perceived and not perceived and that is something knowable which is beyond this and there we generally talk more of experiences and whoever gains similar experiences or whoever gets the glimpse at least of similar experiences so they can understand it this is the language what we are talking we talk it in terms of words we say this is transcendental in nature 
and this here it becomes a little unscientific in the sense most of the most of the people have not experienced what the person is talking so it becomes an amalgamation of a knowable and unknowable the entire universe is interpreted in terms of this because as the knowable experiences increase day by day and year by year the person perceives that there may be some more knowable which is not known yet that's why all the things that is knowable and everything that is unknowable together in the universe then with a subtler gain in understanding a subtler realization one comes to know that knowable unknowable all these things are different aspects of the same entity so the entire universe seems to be a single organism only different parts of this is leveled by human beings as knowable unknowable etc for example my body is a whole and of that different parts of the body are differently aware of course for example my brain is much more living as compared to my fingernail which grows of course and that's why i can't call that dead that is living but however the level of awareness in the fingernail is much less as compared to the level of awareness in the brain so the brain is more ever than the fingernail and there may be a part of my body which never moved since my birth that is still less living so we conclude that the entire universe is a single organism and the different parts of it only are differently aware and from that the side effect is we conclude them to be living and non living however this also is a layer of identity bias because we are caught or we get entangled into the idea that we have understood the universe at the, at this level the further growth of the brain still continues if you observe the slide if you observe the bottom of the container you might have observed already that in the further growth of a brain there is no bottom of the container let me show you just a reminder when we understood the growth from the childhood initially you see there was the bottom of the container right when further growth happened that is it unwinded itself the brain unwinded itself and all the ideas of uh, caste language religion race gender humanity all these uh, are unwinded then at the final growth when the brain perceives the oneness of the entire universe uh, there it looks the container looks like uh, it's uh, looks like a bottomless and the symbolic expression is there's no limit to the growth a clarification at this point is required the skills like eating driving typing coding etc that we accumulate through time certainly have meaning as far as the survival need of the body is concerned however this presentation talks about the emotional attachments those creep into our psyche in the guise of identity thank you